This week I was supposed to go out and shoot in manual mode. Unfortunately, there's bad weather outside, so I can't really take my camera outside when it's bad weather because this is not weatherproof. So I thought I can talk a little bit about what type of camera I have. I'm also gonna take a couple of pictures of my aquarium fish here. And that is also a good way uh, to be able to shoot some in manual mode. Anyway, I'm mainly gonna shoot wildlife photography and nature photography on this channel, but occasionally I will do other stuff as well. So the camera I'm using is a Canon M50. This is a mirrorless camera. And when I'm out shooting wildlife, I got myself this uh, Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter lens. It's an old lens, but uh, this provides me with uh, very good pictures, I think. It's not the best camera, it's not the best lens, but I'm a little bit on a budget and I think this works really well for me. I just got this lens. Uh, before I got this, I used this uh, Canon 80 to 200 millimeter lens. And this is mainly what I've been taking my wildlife photos with. And those pictures are also turning out pretty decent, so I'm also happy with this lens. I just wanted the extra 100 millimeters because I want to get closer to my subject sometimes. And the 200 millimeter is a little bit short of that. Other than this lens, I also have uh, the kit lens here for my Canon M50. And this is a EFM 15 to 45 millimeter lens. Personally, I like these lenses much more than I like the <laughs> standard kit lens. I mainly use this one for um, shooting movies, to be honest. It's a quite good lens, it has image stabilization, and it's also a STM lens, so it's completely quiet when focusing. Doesn't matter too much for me, but um, yeah, it's a decent lens. Since this is a Canon M50, it has the EFM mount, so it's made for these small EFM lenses. I have actually put on a uh, adapter here, so basically I can use any of the Canon EF and the EFS lenses. And this opens up a whole new world of lenses basically. So that's quite nice. Now my Canon M50 here, it is a crop sensor in this one. So it is a bit sensitive to low light conditions. I think it works decent for me anyway. I'm getting good pictures. So I'm actually very happy with it. For now, I don't have any plans to upgrade. So I'm just gonna go with this and uh, we'll have to see in the future. But for now, this is definitely good enough for me as I'm a beginner. The same thing applies to all my lenses here. These are used lenses I buy and uh, they're relatively cheap. And I think for my budget, these lenses are absolutely perfect. There's no reason to go buy really expensive lenses, especially when you're a beginner like me. So this works absolutely perfect for me. Now it's time to take some pictures of my aquarium fish here. And for this, I'm using my Tamron lens here. This is the 70 to 300 millimeter lens. This has a macro function. So I can stay relatively close to my tank and still use the full zoom. And that is relatively nice because I can get a decent close up of my fish here. And before we begin, I'm gonna start by going through the settings I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna shoot in full manual mode today. And uh, even though the aquarium is lit up, it's not comparable to being outside. So the biggest challenge today will definitely be uh, the light here. For the shutter speed, I will begin with one hundredth of a second, which is not very, very fast. But um, this is my best friend here. This is my tripod that I will be using for this. I don't have any stabilizer on this lens. So the tripod will really come in handy here. As I start here, I'm gonna start with an aperture of the lowest possible I have. And that is four when I'm fully zoomed out. And it's gonna be 5.6 when I'm fully zoomed in. As for the ISO, I'm gonna start by setting it to something I find appropriate here. And um, I'm gonna start with 400 and see how it turns out. Some pictures here are really good. All the aquarium fish are pretty easy to work with since they're not afraid if there's people nearby. And a lot of them, I can see some motion blur. Now I want to try to increase the shadow speed a little bit. Now it takes an awful lot of pictures to try to time it right, to get the fish standing somewhat still, to be able to get a sharp picture. These are relatively small fish, so um, they move quite fast and I need a higher shutter speed to really be able to freeze the motion here. I'll try to increase it a little bit and um, this also means I have to increase the ISO a little bit as well. And this will create a little bit more noise in the pictures, but it will make everything more easy to get sharp pictures of the fish. So let's try a couple of different settings here. I'm gonna try to tweak the settings one more time. 
And now I'm going to put the shutter speed at 200. The tripod here stabilizes everything, so 200 should be the highest I need to go. This is still very tiny fishes in the last tank I'm shooting here. And they are really, really fast. I'm also going to set the ISO to um, auto ISO now. I can actually go into the menus and I can select there what the highest possible ISO is going to be. So I'm going to put it at 1600. I think that's quite high for this camera, but it should provide me with decent enough pictures. And this makes it rather easy because when I'm moving around, there's going to be darker and there's going to be brighter areas that I'm trying to take pictures of. And since I already selected what shutter speed I want and what aperture I want, the only thing I can really change is the ISO really. And this will of course make it a little bit more easy to get the pictures I want. Now 200 in shutter speed, I'm getting those sharp pictures that I want. And I'm using a little bit of a trick here. I'm trying to get the eye of the fish in focus. And by doing this, it doesn't really matter if there's a shallow depth of field. So in many pictures, the whole fish will not be in focus. But as long as the eye is in focus, it still makes an interesting picture. I got a couple of nice pictures here. And as always, I'm going to save one. And it's going to be this one. I got an impressive dynamic range in this one. There's a little bit of backlighting on the fish here. And I just like the level of detail on the fish here. So I think this picture is extra interesting. And if my fishes were bigger, I could probably lower the shutter speed a little bit. Since bigger fish tend to move more slowly. And as always, practice makes perfect. So the more I do this, the better I will understand what settings are optimal for this. But I'd say the pictures turned out really well, so I'm happy with them. And if you found this helpful and entertaining, consider subscribing. I do hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video.